you probably okay thank you uh, can you start over <laughs> <laughs> just kidding <laughs> just don't <I> know <laughs> restate the electrical that's the key focus right now is upgrading that electrical if you could just it's a few of those high points Sure. Said the service was a we presently have a service in there that is not sufficiently sized to pick up the building as it sits with adding air conditioning to it. So it, you know, in reality, you had to downsize your service a few years back when you, uh, I think it originally was a 1600 amp service, but you had to downsize it to a 1200 amp service because you added photovoltaic. And I know that doesn't make any sense to anybody that you have to bring your service size down, but it's a national electric code issue that says you got to have capacity within your busing for not only what's on the PV, but also uh, the, the electric service size itself. So in order to make that work, Mike had to downgrade that electric service from 1600 amps down to 1200 amps. And then we added capacity for the PV when that happened. That service size at 1200 amps just does not have the capacity to add all of the air conditioning that you're proposing that, or we're proposing to add within part of this. So that's the reason for that. Um, we think that the most appropriate way to do it is to, because the electric room is on the back side of the building in a most difficult location to get to. So probably coming up the driveway of town hall and with a primary electric service, we've got a, I believe we have a pad mount transformer and a, a weatherproof switchboard. So the switchboard we believe would be outside for that. We just don't think unless you're gonna give up a classroom over there that you've got uh, space for that to happen. So I think it's gotta be a weatherproof exterior uh, switchboard in order to make all of that happen. We would recommend that you do this in a phased manner. So it may be that you can do a wing or two at a time. You know, you're gonna have times that the building's gonna be just, it's gonna take time to do all of this. I don't think you're gonna have time to shut all of the building down and do all of the work that you're trying to do within the space without uh, phasing it out over a couple of year periods. So when we looked at it originally, we, we had, looked at it from a phasing standpoint. Obviously in 2020, when we originally looked at this, this was pre or just as COVID was hitting. I don't think any of us anticipated what was going to happen from a budgetary standpoint of where things go. We've given you numbers based on where we thought it was in 2020. Uh, Mike asked me for my best guess as to where I thought that number was. And my, I believe that you're probably about 25% higher than the numbers that we gave you two years ago um, for what it's gonna to take to do this. And the longer it takes to do it, obviously the more costly it's going to be. Um, things also that to think about as part of this, from a scheduling standpoint, if you phase it right, you can have equipment there when you, when you need it. Um, we're finding that uh, right now, I've got a project I'm working on that we've got 52 weeks uh, to get rooftop units in. So, you know, it's a length of time to get equipment it does take some time. It takes some planning and timing on the part of your contractors that you're going to do this with to get everything on site ready to go. Uh, you want to have it ready, basically sitting, sitting there so when you close up school for the summer, that they can move in the next day and start you on where you want to be. So I'm not sure what else you want me to tell you about what we've done, where we think you should go with it. Um, the report's fairly lengthy. It's about 35 or 36 pages long, along with these documents at the end of it to look at. So I'm assuming that you've all had a chance to review and understand what's in the report from a couple of years ago. Good. Larry, I think one of the biggest things is just clarifying um, 
like the difference between air conditioning and climate control and ventilation. Um, I know you, you kind of went through sure. that rather, rather quickly, um, but can you just kind of give a little uh, background on obviously what schools are up against, you know, now with between COVID and just <clears throat> Yep. Normal, class, normal classroom um, use, you know, with carbon dioxide in the rooms, things like that. So what, what we normal in a normal uh, design, well, let, let's start out with what you got right now with some of these spaces. So like the, the band <laughs> classroom and what have you, you have cooling only in those spaces, meaning that you really, do, the systems that are in place do not have ventilation associated with them. So you've got Mitsubishi split systems in there with a the condensing unit stuck on the wall outside of the building that provides the DX cooling for what's going on. So there is no ventilation per se as part of that. You've got a cooling only that happens there. The units that are up on the roof that feed the main office and the library space right now, or even the one that's for the cafetorium, even though that unit does not have cooling at the moment, they provide ventilation as in, in the case of the library in the office, they provide ventilation and cooling going into those spaces, meaning that we've got, we're bringing in a percentage of outside air uh, when we do that. Right now, the majority of your facility, you've got it set up so that you've got your only ventilation air that comes in, which is outside an outside air component that you're bringing in is what comes in through operable windows. Now, this building was, or it was, the major renovation was done back in 1994. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So you, uh, you were kind of at the cusp right then of when people were making decisions to whether fully air conditioned at the time it was done versus um, what was done here, which was a ventilation only scenario without air conditioning spaces. But you start to look at this that if you only want to ventilate, then you're using fans and using different methods of there versus providing a combination of ventilation and cooling for those spaces. The other thing that's changed considerably in the last few years that you need to look at is that you can't just arbitrarily decide you're going to do something without looking at the energy code. And the energy codes have changed dra drastically in the last 10 years or so. So it's something to consider. That's one of the reasons why we looked at the, the VRF, which is a fairly efficient system from an energy code perspective. And then we use DX units up on the roof that only, the only thing that those units will do is provide the ventilation air. So meaning that you're gonna bring in a, a certain percentage of uh, ventilation air through units up on the roof and you're gonna duck that down to the classroom spaces. And then you're gonna use the uh, DX, the, excuse me, <clears throat> the VRF units within the space to provide that cooling that's required. So you're providing both the ventilation requirement and the cooling requirement for the space. Um, people have come up with uh, recommendations after COVID that came up with way more ventilation rates than were anticipated or required by code. Matter of fact, in, in order to meet what some of these recommendations for COVID that came out, you would have to bust the, your energy code in order to do that. And so, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky scenario that you've got to be, be aware of when you do it, that you may normal six to eight air changes an hour that we would normally design a space to. They're recommending you go up to, you know, du double that amount. So it's taking a lot more outside air and, and cooling and heating outside air is one of the bigger components of your energy bill. Pardon me, I got a question regarding that. Yeah. Um, as far as your makeup air systems, um, what are you proposing to use for those? I mean, what's the brand name? We haven't. We haven't designed it yet, so there's, you know, this was not a design done by BVH. It was a study to give you options on what we're, what's being proposed. You know, you've got 
when you hire an engineer to design the facility for you, they're going to pick the manufacturers. And part of it may come back to they'll pick manufacturers based on schedule and when things want to happen. You know, the, un, you know the, some manufacturers are quicker than others right now of getting things out. Since it's in a public bid, we typically have to, we can't just give you one manufacturer. You know, I can't tell you that I'm going to give you a train or a Johnson Control or a Hacon unit in the space. I may specify all three of those units or even a carrier unit uh, out there. You know, there's, there's probably 10 manufacturers that we could use to do this. And it's just going to be a function of we need to give you three that list out there that give you everything that we we believe you're asking for so that you meet the uh, public bidding requirements. Okay, I appreciate that. So I wish I could tell you that I, I knew the manufacturer, I but I don't. No, no, that's all right. It, 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 it does happen to me though. I, I understand now where we're going with this. Even, even if I told you the manufacturer that I thought was the right one for you, your contractor is going to come back with the manufacturer that they got the best pricing from when they bid it. So I appreciate it. Larry, just to clarify, when you talked about the units in the classrooms, did you, you guys were talking about using the cassettes in most, a v most of the classrooms? Yes, it's a VRF cassette up in the classroom. Now it could be a wall mounted cassette or it can be a ceiling mounted. Typically with something like this, I would wanna probably do ceiling mounted just cause they're gonna be out of the way and no kids, can, you know, the kids aren't really gonna be able to get at them. Yeah, okay. Cause, cause these are kind of the questions that everybody's been asking about is, you know, not knowing what, type of equipment and where it's going to go and what it's going to look like when this is all said and done. Obviously, we don't want to get something that we, you know, they start tearing out a wall and it becomes a big, you know, taking up square well, footage. I mean, so part part of this comes down to, so there's going to be some of that anyway. I mean, not carrying necessarily carrying out walls, but you are going to need as the design of this progresses to get some shafts built down through because you're going to need to be able to bring that ventilation air from the roof down to the, the lower level of the building in the two-story portion of it. Um, listen, if you wanted to go a totally different route, you could turn around and get bigger shafts and bigger ductwork down through, get rid of the VRF and go with DX. And I know you were talking at least to the gas company. Did you ever get gas uh, running running by the school, Mike? No. No. <laughs> okay. No. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna shut up and and not not even bring that one up then. Okay. Yeah, no. No. We're we're kind of strictly looking electric. Okay. There's a lot of schools that are thinking that electric's the way to go. Um, certainly, from the perspective of what you generate as a facility, as as you know, emissions, electric certainly is less for you. I, I try and remind everybody that electricity gets generated somewhere. So whether you're generating heat or electric on your facility, it's still being generated at another facility somewhere. So, mm -hmm. you know, don't, don't think that because everything here is electric, that there is an emissions associated with that, with what, with what's going on. So. Larry, this is Mark Walter, the uh, town administrator. Yes, sir. Um, the, the challenge here is the grant requirements from the state required us to have all funding for this phase. We're, we're looking at phase one being an electrical upgrade and then the A-wing as part of this phase, which will okay. probably be a two-year phase. So yep. we're trying to do electrical first and then the A-wing next summer not this summer <clears throat> if to be if honest not, with you, you to be honest with you you may be too late to do the electric this summer well and that's one question is can the electric happen even with school in process does the electric affect 
school being in process or can we do that while school's in session? You could do, so all of that could be done while school's in session. And remember, you're going to ultimately backfeed the service that's there. So at some point you would have, you know, maybe it's like this weekend is, is a three day week, you know, it's a three day weekend for the school and they do the cutover from point A to point B, you know. Uh, nobody likes working Thanksgiving, but I guarantee you that there's a bucket load of electricians that work almost every Thanksgiving because it's one of the few times that they can get a three and four day weekend to do this kind of stuff. So yeah, it, it happens for sure. Okay, so if the electrical were redone year one, at somehow we schedule it. Yep. Could, could the whole A wing be done next summer? Well, that's a better conversation with a contractor than it is with an engineer. But if you, you know, I've been doing this for about 40 years now, so I've seen a few of these. Um, yeah, if all you're doing is the A-wing, I would say that next summer, as long as it's planned right, and does, does, are you, you, well, let me ask a question. Are you talking the summer of 23 or the summer of 24? 24, because the grant... Not a problem. In the wisdom of the state, they put a deadline that the the, the project has to be done in by the end of 2024. So my recommendation would be you, you get your design team in place, you bid it out, and then you're ready to go, meaning that you've got everything probably bid and done this, let's call it midsummer this year. You bid it out, you get done what you need to get done electrically between now and you know the spring of 24. You have everything sitting there in place spring of 24 to start it, you know, whenever the last day, talk with your school board and get the kids out as early as you can to give your contractor as much room as you can. But yeah, you should be able to do a wing in a in the three in a three month period. What about um, so? Would you would we actually contract BBH to do the design of this project since you're already this far along? You can you can hire us to do it? You can. You may have bidding requirements. You know, it's going to be a big enough number that you may have bidding requirements within town. Would have bidding requirements, so we would have to put it out to bid. Yeah, so you're going to have to get three, you know, two or three proposals, and and be comfortable with what those proposals give you. But here's my question: um, We still have to write a bid spec to do the design. How do we do that? Um, so is that something how, we contract? How'd you, how'd you and I do it? Did we did I did I write an RFP that I gave you a proposal on to do this, or how did we do that? I don't even remember now. That'd be a question for Mike. Um, <clears throat> I'd have to go back and look. I, I think I actually wrote something. For I, you guys. I mean, it really should come from Mike. And if Mike wants to call and ask me some questions when he's writing it, I don't think I mind helping him out doing that. But I probably let's put it this way: I I would not feel comfortable if you asked me if you hired me to write the RFP and then turn around and bid on that same RFP. That's, right. That's the problem. Right. <laughs> and then, right. It has to pass, and we we're we're constrained in time. Yeah. So Mike would have to talk on that uh, mm -hmm. offline on how to get that spec written. Yeah. Um, because what we don't want is whoever writes the spec to actually, um, the, the key is whoever does the construction, we don't want them writing the spec. Yeah, you, you want it, you know, so, I mean, you've got, you got, a project like this can be done one of two ways. You can do what they call a traditional um, design bid build scenario, or you could go design build scenario with a contractor, meaning take the engineer out altogether if you're, but you've got to be comfortable 
with that as a group that you go that route, meaning that you get a proposal out and you give it to three or four contractors, you'd be lucky to probably get two bids at the moment, the way things are, people are bidding stuff right now. Yeah. But uh, you could go, you know, you could go design build with it and bring a contractor in to do it. Have them, they may either have an engineer on staff to do the design work, or they may have to go out and hire an engineer to do that piece of it for them. I mean, it's really, there are multiple ways to accomplish it. So obviously from an engineering perspective, as an engineer, I would say you're better off, you know, if you, if you have a design done first before you do the design build with the contractor is a better scenario for you. Meaning that you're gonna get, I have nothing to gain by how I do it versus a contractor when they do it, they've given you a number already for what it's going to cost, and then they're going to build to that number. Right, and, and, and I think, I know the board select them, we, we had wanted to have someone, I think, envision separately to spec, and then right, like, right wrong, or indifferent, mm -hmm. probably wouldn't be eligible to, to do the second phase, right? So you have to find someone who's willing and able to. Mm -hmm. so, right, we didn't, we're, we're very cautious on over-designing this, in order to win the bill with an over design, because it's just a lot of money. Uh, yeah, you're looking at probably, uh, you know, I think when I tacked on the 25%, you're probably at around almost $12 million. So it's not an insignificant sum. For a whole school. I thought the whole school was at but, 6 million. Yeah, but Larry, you gotta make sure you look at the right copy of that. Remember the square footage yep. change? That's true. Yeah, Come on, Mike. You know, you know you want $12 million to do a renovation here. You get a so, lot of out of that. We'll never get that. No, that's so, with that. The, <laughs> so with the chair's permission, um, this is Jason. With the chair's permission, I'm, I'm the building official and facilities director on the town side. Um, I have a couple of questions. Chris says, go ahead, Jason. Okay. Um, so I read the entire BVH report. Um, it's a uh, it's a it, it's a very um, in depth report, actually very well done. Um, uh, I I do think that um, the recommendations are probably the best and top of the line. Um, I think that the building committee. Uh, needs to ask itself, uh, what are you trying to achieve? So if you're trying to achieve um, climate control and air changes and dehumidification in A-wing, um, that's a different, um, I guess, design spec than necessarily what BVH was, was charged to do when they when they originally uh, wrote this uh, report, um, I have personally seen uh, Scotland Elementary School uh, making some advances in um, climate control as well as um, air changes um, in in their school, uh, and they used a different model that is far less expensive or at least seems far less expensive uh, given what they what they paid uh, but it, they were separately derived systems so get, getting back to Larry um, you know instead of trying to do air changes with the air conditioning they have two separate systems they have a air change system with uh, ERVs and then they have air conditioning uh, provided by uh, mini splits. And also from a financial standpoint, they're able to do it little by little. So they put the ERVs in first and then they did two classrooms at a time as they saw fit for dollars. Um, in this case, you would have a wing as being the first and foremost um, project and you would have you know, ERVs or some kind of air change 
uh, system put in separately from the actual uh, cooling system. Uh, I don't know that it's the smarter idea uh, or or the can less can expensive can idea can per, can per se. Yes, please do. <laughs> so what we're showing is exactly that. Those little green boxes that you see up on the roof are energy, energy recovery units. That's your, that's your ventilation air coming through. So you're going to duck down from that to the low, you know, from the roof down through the second floor to the first floor. And then there are a Mitsubishi split, not a Mitsubishi, uh, excuse me, a VRF unit within each of the classrooms. You, you, could you do it with a Mitsubishi split in lieu of a, a VRF? Absolutely. Is it going to cost you about, I, personally, I think it's going to cost you about the same amount of money. I don't know that you're saving any money. The one thing that the VRFs gives you that you're not going to get with the Mitsubishis is that typically a Mitsubishi is one unit, one condensing unit and one uh, evaporator unit. Whereas the way this is set up right now, you have the ability to use um, refrigerant boxes that collect the refrigerant so that you've got only, it's fewer units up on the roof that you're maintaining. You've got less refrigerant. So you're running refrigerant piping from fewer, fewer units up there rather than on a one for one basis. Correct. Yeah, the VRFs are. I mean, you can put a lot more heads, um, individual spaces on a single VRF outdoor unit. Um, at, at the same time, with with that, like you pointed out earlier, a um, little harder to get, longer lead times. Um, the library, right, right in Columbia, the uh, the library actually has VRFs, and uh, when one of them broke less than three years uh, in, uh, it took almost a half a year to uh, get parts for it. Whereas a lot of these Fujitsu or Mitsubishi, um, you know, split units where you can maybe do two classrooms on one unit or only one, depending on the size, um, they're readily available. They, they get shipped more often, they're they're used everywhere. They're used on residential. They're used on uh, commercial. They're used on uh, hospitals. Sometimes VRFs are very common in hospitals. Um, but it, so there is that too. But the dollar amount, I'm like you mentioned, maybe it wouldn't be less expensive. But uh, it it sure seems like there are a couple options available other than just um, standard VRF, um, system for the entire, for the entire space. And I just don't know what is the, um, what is the most cost effective way to achieve the goals. And also everybody needs to, on the building committee, everybody needs to be, uh, clear about what the goal is, is the goal to air condition and dehumidify, uh, you know, the A-wing, or is the goal to uh, get the entire school air conditioned and, uh, and, 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 and the air exchanges for the entire school? So I, I guess what I can maybe go to that, again, the, the charge is supposed to be eventually voted on tomorrow night by the Board of Selectmen, but my understanding is that Mark can certainly clarify, um, the charge will be for the A-wing, Right. And like like first like my head mentioned, I mean it's really it's really to address the humidity, right? It's to make sure that we don't have concerns with um, air quality and mold buildup, you know. It's humid it's two twofold. It's the humidity of the downstairs and the air conditioning of the second story upstairs. So our A wing is the worst wing in the school. And it's kind of our test. If if whatever model we come up with. The A wing is a huge success, and I think it gives us a lot more confidence in going forward um, with this solution for other parts of the school. But we we have to. It's like eating an elephant. We have to have one bite at a time because there's no way we can even think of the amount of money required because that would be a giant bond issue, and it's multiple, multiple, multiple years. Uh, so, and, and the practicality with 
the grant requirements, right? Assuming that we still remain eligible for the grant, all this, whatever we we put forth that the grant covers has to be done by the end of December 24th. So. Well, um, and the challenge, Larry and Jason, is that the way the state wrote the grant is we have to authorize the entire funding for what we've deemed our priority, which is the A-wing and the electrical by February 28th which means we have to have a town referendum offer, authorizing that funding, uh, which would have to be put in place uh, in early February. We'd have to set those dates at public hearings, town meeting, educate the town in a very short period of time, which is not gonna be easy. Uh, Facebook could be helpful or it could be hurtful, depending on mm -hmm. what goes, how, how we get ahead of this. And we don't have a lot of time. Um, so uh, the state funding could be half of this cost to upgrade the electrical and do the A-Win. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a big help. And we've already applied for this grant, um, uh, but we don't know if we'll win the grant, but we certainly will not be in contention if we don't have the funding in place by February 20th. That, that's a big challenge. So Jason, how, how are we going to come to terms in such a short period of time? Or would that all be pulled together by the actual design? I mean, I, I would think that having a uh, designer, BVH or, or any, any other designer, um, Take a look at it with the um, with the mentality that we're looking to achieve dehumidification, uh, air exchanges, and cooling um, at the lowest cost. Uh, that's 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 basically the 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 charge to the designer. Um, and what can they come up with? Um, that okay. that will do that it, it it sounds like larry um thinks that what they've come up with is probably the best option um and and it may be uh but that's i i would be very clear mike if you're writing it um but i would be clear as to to the designer what the goal is and if that goal is dehumidification because you're concerned we are concerned on the especially on the lower floor um with humidity um keep in mind that a lot of vrfs and um many standard mini split systems uh do have dehumidification uh settings even when they're not in cooling mode uh combined with the rvs um you can get your air changes and you can get um dehumidification and then the cooling um but i think you have to write that up and have a designer go for it. But the problem is, is I, I think Larry pointed it out about the contractors, but even the engineers are, um, they're kind of busy. <laughs> and uh, we got a very, very short time frame. Right. So that, that design bid spec would have to be pulled together very quickly, get a designer on, on, uh, on retainer, and then, get a referendum that authorizes a dollar amount. And then we'll see once we get a design and then we put out the bid, whether we're within that range for what we authorize. Do you, do you actually need the designer to do anything before the referendum? Are you thinking you're gonna? Well, I'm thinking you don't have time, but- We, we don't. Sure in, 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 in the perfect world, we would have a designer, we would put out the bid, we would have our bid locked in, then we would go to referendum. But then we're forfeiting a potential 50% or 49 or 48. We don't know what the percentage is. Uh, we, we'd be forfeiting that from the state. So we're kind of, we're, we're rushing and we're uncomfortable with rushing uh, in order to qualify for the state grant. I guess, I guess I'm trying to understand what we need to do to go to referendum. We, we, I presume we don't need a design because we're 
frankly, I don't see how we're going to get a design done. We won't have that done before referendum. So, so we don't need a consultant on board before the referendum. No. What, what we're going to do is go to referendum with, in my mind, with the BBH plan, their original specs of estimates. Well, right, for their feasibility study showing this is what they would recommend. Right. Get that approved. Escalated for whatever. Right? We, have right. to, we have to escalate the value, right? Because does that really become a, hopefully, a, you know, a, an estimate that we're comfortable enough that we, with margin, whatever, that we ask for X amount in referendum, assuming that that gets passed. And then at that point, we could go out to bid for the designer. Um, Right, right. Design mm -hmm. specs that meet. Yeah, they, they were. Then you would follow through. Policy. And and I I know that if we do get approved for the grant, the state obviously, if we hire a designer, get the bid specs, we go out to bid, and all the bids come back higher. You don't have to do the project. You know, they they would be willing to take that money back. Right. Um, you know, because they haven't expended it, the town hasn't expended any money. Then you go back to the drawing board, they say, okay, where can we change? Where can we, do we only do one floor in a wing? Do we come up with a different electrical change? You know, you kind of rethink everything. And we're well, open too, with the designer and an actual bid, maybe we'll, we'll come in tighter. You could come in a little closer, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And cheaper by then, right? Because I mean, I mean, your I assume your RP would be kind of broadly written where like Jason was saying, you know, dehumidify this location, provide mm -hmm. ventilation and air in this location, and, and really, it's you. A designer could recommend multiple types of right. A spec could be a BRF roof unit or equivalent um, that yeah. provides similar. Right? So I mean, it's. Right. If it was We're not locked into anything necessarily that's recommended, right? Mm -hmm. Because really, it would be what we're proposing to do the construction. We have the spec saying, okay, well, they're looking at this, or what else could I re recommend in lieu of, mm -hmm. um, you know, VRF rooftop unit with whatever? Because um, with the, the electrical, obviously, would be a separate bid, right? That would be a separate contractor typically. Mm -hmm. No? Well, I, I would think that we would uh, probably would be. If we're going to do it in phases, right. yeah, I think you, we have to break this into two specs: upgrade electrical. Well, it's, it's going to be all part of that. Whoever's going to do the engineering would do all of that because they have to be able to okay. supply power. Am I correct, Larry? And you know, you would probably be doing all of the both the HVAC and the electrical. You you need one engineering firm to do both so that you're right. they're coordinated because otherwise you're not going to buy the right circuit breakers and things you need in the the second piece. But you know something to think about you are going to have to give your engineers some upfront advice on okay so while we're only building a now a wing now we are doing the remaining wings later on so make sure that we've got capacity within what we're doing electrically to handle that right right yeah. is can we i'm just trying to keep our options open now i guess there really can't be two questions because if question one is upgrade electrical question two is upgrade the air handling of the school, the grant requires both. Right. It doesn't. Right. Yeah, we couldn't do one without the other. No. So really, we can do the electrical, but it doesn't well, serve you in purpose, right? right? Mm -hmm. But you can do it, right? Mm -hmm. but and what we're accomplishing or not? You know, if the, if, if the referendum goes down, then we're starting over and. We'll do it step by step, and that hopefully there's a round two for grants next year, because I'm sure round one is not handling the needs of all the schools of Connecticut. It just it's just handling. I think half the money had to go to disadvantaged schools, so we're fighting for the other half for non-disadvantaged. 
Well, but the key was is that they still had to show proof of maintenance. You had to have contracts and the, the ability to pay for the maintenance of these equi this equipment. Right. So that, you know, we, we believe in reading through that, that they want to make sure that this stuff is there mm -hmm. 10, 15, 20 years <clears throat> down the road. And maintain. If they're going to maintain it, and then they're going to potentially be putting more money into it to either upgrade it or keep it going. And I was in it's cost. supposed to. Last week, council of small towns with the our key elected officials in the state senate and state reps, they were saying that a lot of the air handling problems of our school systems are lack of maintenance. Mm -hmm. So they're convinced that a lot of these schools that haven't maintained their air handling equipment, it's at their fault. Mm -hmm. So they're they're looking for that too. Mm -hmm. You're right. So, so just trying to be mindful of time, because uh, Larry's been so gracious to give us uh, an hour plus. Is there anything else we need or ask of him? Jason, do you have anything else for Larry while we have him? No, thank you very much. It's a great report. Uh, okay. Yeah, I appreciate it. I, I, just, I just have one question for you. In terms of electrical upgrade, yep. if, if the current schedule is just wing A for the, the HVAC, is there a stepwise procedure for the upgrade or that just doesn't make sense? Now, once you once you decide what size switchboard is going to go in there, that's what you put in. The thing that the thing that you may be able to look at, and, and again, we didn't look at we looked at it a global picture here, not a wing A only picture. Maybe there's capacity in the existing service to only do wing A. I don't, you know, I, I haven't. I honestly haven't looked at it yet, but that's something to at least ask the design team when you get, you know, whomever gets the job, that that's something they should look at. Okay. That's actually something I, I kind of looked at to a degree. Um, and I don't know about the capacity and the switch gear, but one of the things I thought about was that we, the wiring, the actual wiring, so therefore the conduit, the trenching, the repaving, all of that. Um, the wiring was in place for higher amperage. Um, so could we go back to 1600, maybe not up to 2000 or 2400, but could we go back to 1600 without actually um, retrenching, putting new conduit, and running new wire from 87 to the school. You would have to, uh, and you would have I haven't gotten an answer it. from any electrician yet on that. You would have to get rid of your PV system in order to do that. Because the wiring is still, the wiring still it's, derated. It's the, it's the busing in your, the 1600 amp busing in your switchboard does not have capacity at that for 1600 amps of electric plus the pv so it's okay it's an, additive, it's an additive number so and i don't know what size i don't remember what size pv it was but if you add that to whatever the nominal busing requirement was it was 1600 amps to be covered so you if you look at what you did you've got to you would have to remove the pv from your system in order to go back to 1600 amps in that switchboard the busing never changed. The busing still uh, 1,600 amps inside of there. What changed was you changed the trip rating of your main circuit breaker from 12 uh, 1,600 amps down to 1,200 amps. The circuit actually... the, the circuit was reduced, but um, but the wiring. I, I'm talking about the actual wire and the wiring um, change. Right, and the conduit. So, but you can't, but you um, can't rate it. The problem is, is that yes, you have 1600 amps of capacity from the transformer into the switchboard. When that change was made, they didn't remove wires from there. So you've got 1600 amps of capacity going from the transformer over. The problem mm -hmm. is that the, the switchboard itself cannot be rated at 1600 amps unless you remove the PV from the system. Correct. But if you remove the PV, then yeah, you could upgrade to the uh, 1600 amps. 
Right. So obviously, we don't want to do that. But <laughs> just make a correction. Just so you guys, it's it was actually originally twelve hundred amp, and they now have derated it to six hundred amp, including the with the PV system. But Mike, the wire itself, I'm not I'm not talking about the switchboard. The 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 actual switch gear is gonna have to uh be upgraded. I know that. But the wiring and the conduit size and everything else that that's involved, which is dollars um from the street to the school, um would we need to upgrade that necessarily? Yes. Sixteen hundred amps is not gonna get you the I mean. It's not enough to do the entire school. So you've got, right. if you're looking at an upgrade to the electric service, I mean, maybe, like I said, I would look at what you've got and see if wing A can fit within the confines of what you've got there now. That would be my first step from an engineering perspective. I would start to look at it from there. But at the same time. Certainly if you were doing the whole school, that's an enormous number of pieces of equipment. Um, but the um, just a wing and the and and not so much whether we have to upgrade uh equipment but would we have to upgrade the actual the actual um conduit and wire coming from eversource and i don't i don't know the answer but that that's something that like i said you know somebody has to look at so right so right now you've got a transformer outside that's rated for how, however many kva it's rated for and coming out of that there are probably three conduits that come in from the building from when this was done it would have been three uh, sets of 500 kc mil and they came into a, a fuse bolted pressure switch then from there, you downrated it in order to put the PV system in. So I can't use any more than 600 amps of capacity in there to start to feed things and make it fit. I, I agree with you that there is 1,200 amps of capacity that comes from the transformer into the board, but you can't use it without putting a new, a new switchboard in that's rated for the higher amperage to give you capacity for the PV plus what you need. Right. You good, Mike? Jason, you good? Yeah. All right, Larry, thank you very much. Well, you're welcome. Appreciate it. There's a lot to take in. He certainly knows a lot about that. So. <laughs> I guess <it's> Benny. <laughs> I know. Well, BBH was the uh, engineer of design for the renovations. In 94, right? In 94. Yeah. They actually came out, they commissioned the building when we found all the deficiencies in the renovation project. Um, so they got very familiar with the building. They did a lighting um, an electrical upgrade back in, I believe it was 2010. So they're, they're very familiar with the building. Um, so that's why we went to them because we had that relationship with them for them to be able to do the feasibility study um, and know the building and didn't have to start from scratch and spending time coming in saying, what do you have here? What do you have there? And what's already existing in the building? They could look at just the floor plans. They already had those in place. They could pull them up electronically and plug everything in. Mark, can you unmute Robert? Um,
hope you have a question for later. Robert, can you unmute yourself? Was it his question or was it just? It was he was raising in the chat. Um, <clears throat> Hello? Cursor. The cursor. Yeah, I think it was. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. It was right. <laughs> it shows it all. I'm not zooming. Zoom over here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So a lot of information. I'm trying to think what what would be your next thoughts. I mean, we've got this like the meeting tomorrow night. Yeah. Let me uh, let me pull together the calendar. And discuss really with the grant, we're tied to a dollar amount that we put in for the grant of 1.8 million. Um, right, right, if we were to go and I'd stay with that and get the authorization and then start in earnest hiring a design team with what Jason is well, do, doing, and the RFP, 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 right, and be able to get. <clears throat> Companies to basically bid on doing the design work. Right. For the A Wing and the electrical upgrade with right. the thought of future. Right. Which the selectman could, depending on the value, could approve that current budget or whatnot. Right. I mean, that would, that value to do the design wouldn't have to be rolled into the referendum or, or, would, or would we do that? No, I'd say we could authorize that expense outside the referendum. It does. It, it does in the the grant. You can get reimbursed for that design because that was one of the things. Because they figured most okay. um, municipalities weren't going to have drawings already in place. Yeah, I think you'd have to authorize the expense. You could roll it into the grant if we mm -hmm. win the grant. Right. Yeah. Right. Otherwise, you're right. authorizing. We're going to pay for this design. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. right. right. Mm -hmm. And we'll find out what it costs based upon the bids. The bid. yeah, right. And then mm -hmm. once you have a bid spec, we get it designed and we put it out for construction. Yeah. For right for construction bid, the you know, bidding process. Within this window we're mm -hmm. trying to achieve. And mm -hmm. by if we if red runner passes and we notify the state that we have the money allocated, then we'll see if we get the grant. And we'll have to, and either way, at least move forward with at least trying to schedule the electrical, right? Get that piece out the bit right. we can open fair everything's authorized, get that going while we're waiting here about the and the good thing is the we, we have this recorded session. Um the board could watch this meeting and come up to speed with everything we know. No. We don't know. <laughs> This is a, this is a, well, luckily, Mike and Jason are both here to help shepherd us through this. So, do we, that easy. given a time frame and what we've heard, should we still reach out to this R, RZ designs? Or, 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 they, or would they be a potential? Uh, they'd be a potential. Who would bid for this, right? I think right now, mm -hmm. it's a matter of what you and yep. Jason, whatever comes up with, what the mm -hmm. RP for the architect, right? Mm -hmm. that, that would really. Yeah, so our design could actually bid on doing the design. Right. So we don't need to we don't need to reach out to it. Um, I, I guess I'm asking, I'm not saying we we don't need to bring in any more potential designer architects, engineers right. here. No, not till we write a right. design spec. Well, a bid spec for bid the design, design, right? For design. A bid spec right. for the design. Yes, because you, you guys would have to decide what you're actually looking for. And and it would it would basically just say that. Whether it's dehumidification, air conditioning, and yeah. ventilation, right? And say so come up with the best, these, most right. economical, feasible design based on equipment availability and achieving completion by summer. Right, and, and a lot of that can be it's in the be summer twenty twenty four. I think it's summer. It's December. Yeah, yeah, the end of right. Right. Yeah. Could be well, as it was saying, December. December. Yeah. Yeah. Could be a chunk of it done in the summer, a chunk of it done next year, Christmas. Yeah, because the electrical could be done either just prior to the work 
happening or even that summer you just do all of it right if that's what it came down to right correct you know if equipment was not available you, but it's getting it in place getting talks with the contractors once you've got that going um, we did that with the roof project and, and as soon as we were out that day trailers were rolling in with equipment that afternoon Jason, are you and Mike available tomorrow night for the board selection meeting? Uh, I can be available on by phone, but I can't make it into the office. That's fine. Phone's fine. Mike, what's your schedule? Yeah, I, I think I am. I think the board's going to have a lot of questions. Yeah, I am. Okay, good. Let's, are these meetings public? What's up? These names public, they can become these names too if they need to know more information, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually, it was noted in, in the selectman um, packet that went out um, that this was via Zoom tonight and yeah. that they were notified and it's posted. So, I think that should be encouraged as well, you know, like yes. mostly it's just. Board of Ed and Board of Ed. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm here to represent Board of Ed, so that's why I'm on the committee. So. I think yeah, and Chris is representing the Board of Selectmen. Okay. So, uh, he's, he's on the board. Uh, it's just. Everybody else, yeah. Yeah, we just had an hour and a half meeting. It's hard to mm -hmm. put that into a 10 minute cell by there. Right. Right. All right. We good? You guys, Chris. anything else? Jeff, anything else? <clears throat> Thoughts? I don't know my head hurts. But I think it's getting that design spec written is the key right now. And going through the process of getting the dollar amount approved by a referendum. And well, we're going to take to meet with, with, which I think ultimately we are going to have to <clears throat> come up with based upon the information we have, right? Yeah, and, uh, I think 1.8 was based upon what they, I don't think that has a 25% escalation. In it it does. That is, 1.8 is, it would be this current, you know, year's pricing. So the 1.8 would cover that, including escalation. Mm -hmm. And okay. controlled air also agreed to that 1.8. In there as a rough per square footage number. And what would they would be considered potential designer? No, control air would be a potential installer. Bitter, okay. Bitter, okay. Bitter, 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 Bitter. Bitter. Yes. Okay. Because it takes, okay, good. So I'm feeling better. Now. So the one point I included the entire electric upgrade? Yes. Yes. All the, right. I thought right. if I remember correctly, all of the. Uh, electrical for an entire project and, and the whole thing. Right. Right. Okay, good. Right. And I think we're, I mean, I know it kept getting down back to us like, what is our goal in all this? And I do think that it is all three of those, right? It is yes. cooling, um, dehumidifying, and air exchanges. And air exchange. I and mean, that's pretty clear right. amongst us. Right? And I think the challenge is, as Jason and Larry went back and forth, and when Mike is, you, there's different ways to deal with these units. Um, well, of course, there's going to be different prices for particular units that you get. Right. So, yes, you, you can put in one mini split mm -hmm. and get it cheaper, but is it going to last? Are you going to be able to get parts? Are you going to be able to service it when it goes down? What's going to happen to right. those rooms? Well, if the library is our example, that is not been a good example. But I think Jason, the library was the manufacturer they chose, which we're not thrilled with for that ERV system. Yeah, I, I would say. I mean, that's a that's a VRF, um, and I, I'm I'm going to hope that it was just the manufacturer. Um, uh, larger larger facilities use VRFs uh, regularly. Um, VRFs are oftentimes used in hospitals because of the need to uh, heat one space while cooling another. Um, VRFs are not entirely necessary, in my opinion, uh, from a technology standpoint, uh, anywhere where, you know, you don't have to heat and cool at the same time. And uh, in my opinion, a school doesn't need to be heated and cooled um, at the same time. It's either in heating mode or in cooling mode. Um, 
But well, at the same, at, at with the VRFs, well, you do got, get, sorry, Mike, go ahead. I, I was just gonna say what happens now when you have a classroom in the same hallway, one's facing south, one's facing north. And so you're gonna be heating in one room and cooling in another. Well, that's that's my that's my point is you should never allow that to happen. Um, no, no school has ever allowed that to happen. Um, you 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 really that's getting way too picky for a school situation or an office situation. When it comes to a hospital where you actually have equipment and you have people that are uh, deathly ill, I suppose that makes sense. But to, but to cool one room while you're heating another seems like an enormous waste of uh money granted when you use a vrf to do it uh they are actually exchanging heat with each other so it is a um uh technologically a a, a, a big difference from the old days if you tried to heat and cool at the same time um but uh you know i i just think it's overkill on the um on the technology uh but if it's not more costly then go for it and at the same time, the VRFs, you're going to put a lot more heads on one unit. So when that one unit breaks, um, you're losing a lot more space. Uh, you know, more space is dysfunctional at, at one time while it's broken. Whereas if you use more units, smaller units that are doing individual or two classrooms at a time, um, if one breaks, well, those two classrooms are down, but the other eight or nine, how many are there total in there? 13? I think it's 13. 12 or 13, yeah. 12 or 13. So, you know, if you used more units, um, you do have that redundancy. Uh, right there in the room you're in right now, the, um, the unit on the wall uh, does... Um, well, the, the outdoor unit that's powering the unit on that wall does only two other rooms in the building. Uh, so if that unit goes down, the other spaces are still working. Um, so there's some redundancy. When it comes to heat, the school has no issue because you have the redundancy of having the, uh, the other heating system. Uh, so that's it's really nice to have redundant systems uh, in case the unit breaks. Jason, for us lay people, can you, can you tell us what ERF stands for? Well, an ERV, uh, that's an ERV, energy. ERV. Okay. Oh, a VRF. Yep, well, VRF, right. That's, that's variable refrigerant flow heat pumps. And variable energy. refrigerant flow, and an ERV is a energy recovery ventilator. Okay, thank you. Recovery ventilator. Mm -hmm. And, and as we were saying, the technology, it's not as advanced per se. They're smaller, but you use more frequent. You have to use more units, right? It covers a smaller area, but that's where you're saying you would, if a couple went down, you wouldn't be jeopardizing the entire wing. You would just be jeopardizing those. It's the mini, yeah, the mini split, the mini split heat pumps, um, you would, you know, they would either do one or two classrooms, depending on which size and, and the design. Um, I know Scotland has been doing two classrooms um, per outdoor unit. So they're doing ceiling cassettes uh, centered in the uh, classroom, and they're doing two ceiling cassettes per outdoor uh, condensing unit. Um, and that's how they're doing it. They did a few I think they did four this past summer, which means they did eight classrooms. They did four the previous summer. Um, they are not putting ERVs in, uh, which they should be. Uh, they're still using their old, um, just basic fans, like you guys already have at Horace Porter. Um, you know, just a fan unit mm -hmm. that's exchanging air without actually exchanging energy, uh, which is not very energy efficient, obviously, uh, costs a lot more to uh, reheat that cold air that it's bringing in. Um, but that's how Scotland Elementary is doing it. I believe Andover uh, is doing the same thing. Um, but the ERVs are, it, it, from my standpoint, the difference between the, the 
uh, proposals that you're looking at is versus what they're doing is making sure you use ERVs um, for your fresh air. It, it, it means that you're uh, putting in duct work. It means that you're putting in uh, filtration uh, of that air. So you're cleaning your air uh, before it comes in. And, and, you know, so it it's a much better uh, designed to use an ERV than uh, standard, you know, just fan units. Uh, and what I forgot who was mentioning it, but oh, Mark, I think you were mentioning it about uh, cost. But literally at the at Lyman when um, COVID hit, I went up on the Lyman roof, and somewhere around twelve out of twenty six uh, fan units had broken belts. That was it, broken belts. And I ordered all those belts fixed prior to them opening the building. But, you know, it, it's just a matter of maintenance with some of these things. But it's amazing uh, how many schools are just not even paying attention to their maintenance. Um, and uh, luckily, we have uh, Mike and Horace is in, uh, Horace Porter's in a good, sh in good shape. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jason. Mike, do you have any follow up on those thoughts? No. <clears throat> um, does Robert have anything? I know he's been on you. Yeah, Guess not. Um, actually, you know, one question, um, and I assume the answer is not. An issue. Um, there's no abatement issue you have to worry about, right? That's well, right. There <clears throat> could be in the floors, but I don't believe we'll be affecting any of those. Good answer. Because it's all, if we're all in the ceilings, it's just going to depend on where the ductwork is going from second floor to first floor. I think my only input is, and I'm sure we'll do this, um, is to make sure whatever system we do put in, it's not just the Band-Aid care problem that we have now that it's sustainable over a long period of time, because we just don't want a bigger pro problem later. You know, I think we're all on the same page with that, but when I hear about, you know, what other schools are doing, you know, it's great to hear what other people are doing, what other options are out there, but when it comes down to it, it might be more money, but, it might save us more money in the end. Well, what I like about the what we're trying to do with the A wing is it becomes a test. And we yeah. see without committing to the entire school, we do a test of our worst wing and see how well yeah. it works. So we look at and it. every situation is different for every school. Sure. Right. Yeah. Great. Good, Chris. I'm good. Unless you guys have any other questions, I guess the next meeting will be next Monday. Right, and um, uh, the key meeting is Monday. Yep, yep. And what time does that start? Seven. 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 Okay. Here. And here. Yep. And keep this in the Yep. Get their support. All right. All right. So I guess the motion. To adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. Move by Christine. Just a second. All right. All in favor? We're adjourned at is it seven? Very well. Well. <clears throat>